my name is Mallory Westbrook. I'm a staff engineer at Intelligent Concrete. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about geopolymer concrete. So what it is, um, some basic chemistry behind it and why we care. Um, so the biggest difference between geopolymer concrete and traditional Portland cement concrete is that Portland cement concrete really relies on that calcium silicate hydrate gel as the backbone of concrete strength. Whereas geopolymer concrete um, relies on alumina and silica. So what's really cool about that is a lot of the supplementary cementitious materials we're already using today, like fly ash, slag, metacalin, colloidal silica, my favorite, um, they all contain alumina and silica. So basically what's happening is when you have alumina and silica and some kind of alkaline activator solution, and when these components react, they create this alumina silicate network, and it can either be amorphous, it can be partially crystalline, um, but this creates a hardened product that's resistant to water, and that's your building material right there. So for geopolymerization to occur, the first thing that happens is you've got this dissolution of alumina and silica um, from there in the alkali environment. Um, from there, you've got an orientation of the alumina and silica species. Uh, they undergo polycondensation, and then you've got this 3D alumina silicate network. Um, and what's really neat about this is by manipulating the amount of alumina and silica that you're adding, um, you're creating different types of bonds that are gonna result in different types of concrete. So, for example, um, you know, fly ash is gonna have a different amount of silica to alumina than slag, um, than colloidal silica. So when you're starting to work with geopolymer concrete, it's important to consider what you, what results you want in your end concrete. So um, there's, there's a ton of studies on this that you can find. Um, one study, a MTEC, I believe it was in 2015, um, they really looked, they were focused on high strength concrete. And so they looked at adding different ratios of silica to alumina and how that affects the strength. And what they found was that at a ratio of 2.65 times silica to alumina, um, they uh, achieved their highest compressive strength. Once they started adding more silica, um, when they got to like the three times range, they actually found a decrease in compressive strength. Um, and kind of to piggyback on that, there was this other really cool study where they used magnetic resonance and they could look at the types of bonds that were being formed um, with different ratios of silica to alumina. And they found that when more silica was added, you get less of the alumina oxygen silica bonds and more of the silica oxygen silica bonds, which resulted in higher compressive strength. So pretty cool. Um, and then on the flip side, you know, if you're concerned about the fresh properties, if you're looking at your set time, your workability, um, it's been found that having uh, more silica actually makes the geopolymerization process take longer. Um, you know, longer dissolution, longer polycondensation, so your set time is gonna be much greater. So if you are looking for fast setting concrete, by reducing your amount of silica, um, you can actually get that quicker setting time. So I've read that 1.8 is, um, you know, one study found that the, a ratio of 1.8 silica to alumina achieved that, that fast set time, but it wasn't too detrimental to um, the compressive strength of the concrete. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. So as I said, just the basics. If you have any questions, anything you'd like me to address in another video, please let me know and I'll be happy to do so. Thanks guys.